Well, it's 6.30 and we're going to start right on time, uh, so I don't penalize those of you that are punctual. Those of you online, uh, welcome. We're recording this also, so uh, if you're watching this recorded, follow up with me or Tiffany if you have more questions. And uh, let's pray, and then I'll introduce Dr. Terry Linhart. Uh, Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity to come together. And I'm really excited about uh, what you're doing in and through the vision of Bethel University. And we pray, Father, that truly we will see a, a kingdom impact through this Extension University here on Kauai, then on Oahu, on the Big Island. And I pray, Father, uh, this would be translated in to uh, the next generation being equipped to serve your purpose in their generation to uh, be able to do and go wherever you would call them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I don't want to keep you guys too terribly late, so uh, tonight uh, Terry is going to give us some information, and then we're totally open for question and answers. The one thing I ask, because we're recording this for the people who couldn't make it but want to get the information, I have Tiffany and Brian with some handheld mics. So they don't bite, so, you know, talk into the mic so that, you know, we get it on the recording, yeah? And there's no question that's too shallow or silly. Um, we want you to walk away feeling like you, you grasp this at a level where you can really pray about it. And I want to be able to have a large number of questions for those that are going to be watching it that aren't here uh, live today, yeah? So, Terry, I'll let you introduce yourself and talk story. And Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I think I'm turned on here. Well, welcome. I'm glad to uh, be here tonight and uh, share with you. I've been uh, the pleasure of talking about this program across the country and often we hold meetings like this and we get uh, you know a dozen or so people here and welcome everybody that's watching this online and sharing this video with others. Um, I've been in higher education for 20 some years now and before that I was in youth ministry uh, for 15 years and that's how I got my start but um, uh, about four or five years ago I started receiving phone calls from parents and from church leaders and from just students even, and says, why is it so expensive to go to a Christian college? Why is it so expensive to go to college in general? And why do I want to go away to a college when I don't really know uh, what I want to do or leave my job or leave my family or uh, go to some place that doesn't care for me? And I never really had a good answer. I couldn't come up with a reason. Uh, we have expenses on campus. We have a way of doing education and so it was always frustrating the churches wanted to you know raise the next generation of leaders business people wanted to combine practice with uh, theory and have a practical education and about two years ago we stumbled across a new model of education and the board of trustees at bethel said we're going to do this and we had a donor that started this thing and it's been amazing and so all ever since then i've been talking to churches uh, across the country and we've got about 25 churches jumping in now this church was one of the first five to do that we're excited that now we're coming out of a pandemic where we can try it on for size and uh, hopefully we'll keep coming out of it and do this and since we've started this two years ago the stories that have come out of this program have been heart heart uh, rendering to me they they've just challenged me because I think this is an answer to a problem that's been going on for a while, and uh, I'm more excited about it than ever. And here's what's going to happen is we're going to have this meeting, and people are going to look at this, and we're going to say, do you remember when, when, you know, five years from now, when this thing's bigger here on the island, we're going to say, do you remember when we gathered together and talked about this for the first time? So I created a PowerPoint at the last minute. Hopefully it's coming up here. Uh, we'll see if it's working. And, oh, there it is. Okay, so just today. Just today, right here, this is from one of our sites. Uh, the girl in the middle with her eyes closed, 
uh, doing, the, not in the middle, she's sort of at the table, just graduated with her four-year degree in Christian leadership from BU at NMC. And these are uh, most of the students at the site who are coming around her, celebrating her. And what Taylor wanted to do was she was on our campus and financially just was digging herself into a hole uh, and just couldn't afford it anymore. She's funding her own education. And so this afforded her the opportunity to come to uh, a more affordable way to do education, to come around an environment. And one of the things I always say to people about the BUX model of what we're doing is it's this community. It's this, this sense of community that's being fostered in a way that focuses on each individual student and his or her story and helps them take their next best step forward. And now Bethel has a lot of really creative mechanisms that will match a student's schedule. And so this is one of them. We call it BUX. And it's called X because it's like X marks the spot. It is the extension studies. We were trying to think of something cool. So, you know, we bring the college education to you. So you don't have to go away to college. Figure something out. Spend a lot of money. Maybe not sure what you want to do. Uh, and it's practical. It's local. Uh, it's, uh, it's affordable and it's uh, nurturing as well as we do that. So, sorry, I have a lot of small words on the screen there, but it's essentially a leadership development program at its heart. The idea is to take men and women who want to take their next step, whether it's in cybersecurity like we've been talking tonight, whether it's in a creative area like science and nutrition, uh, the medical field, uh, we don't have a medical degree, but you can get started on that, education, uh, but and do it in the context of a local church that cares for you. And I think that's the significant part. There are men and women in each church who are leaders who would love to see the next generation come up and learn how to be Christian leaders, whatever vocation they want to be a part of. So it's uh, classes are offered at the school uh, throughout the week. And here's, I think, the advantages to the program is that it answers the questions that are being asked of Christian universities. Why is it so expensive? Why am I spending $40,000 or more a year on a Christian college education? Uh, and there are things that you get from going to college. I love the Christian college degree. We have, we have uh, many students on our campus. Our enrollment is staying strong. People come to that, but that's not for everybody. And some people want something different, or some people say, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that I want to do all four years there. Maybe can I do two years at a BUX site and then transfer to the campus later? And of course, we can have that happen there. Yeah. But I love the extension site because it meets students where they are, their own dreams. And so we're finding uh, achievement-oriented students or students who have, uh, you know, they're already starting on their career and they want to take their next best step. I call it like my time education. And so because classes are offered in the combination of online and live online right now, we'll start that way, uh, the, the footprint of what's required for you to have to be involved to get your degree is smaller than if you went away to a college. So that you can still have a part-time job. You can still be involved in something and do uh, the BUX version of education. The third thing is it allows you to explore things. A lot of students go, I don't really know what I want to do. I, I don't know what the next step is. So you get to try some things on for size through a practicum, taking a class, having mentoring and conversations and that. And it's just a, a safe first step into the, the next level where you go, because uh, you know sometimes students go away to college and they change their major four or five times. Uh, and that's okay to do that. There's nothing wrong with that, but this is a way to do it uh, and uh, get a, a head start on things. One of the absolutely critical things about the program is that every semester you can do a semester-long practicum in an area or a field that you love. So if you have an interest in a certain area, whether it's in the church or in the community, in the business world, the marketplace or ministry, you can do a semester-long practicum for credit as part of your education, and the next semester you can do it again, and the next semester again. Not the same thing, but maybe something else. So you can try on different things for size, because a lot of students will sit in the class and maybe you did this in high school, or if you went to college a little bit, you did this, and you go, why am I taking this class? You know, what am I, I'm never going to use it. Now, sometimes classes are meant to stretch your brain. It's like, it's like working out, right? Your brain is, Einstein said, your brain's like a muscle, and sometimes you take calculus just to put it through its paces to see what it can do. And that's a good thing there. But sometimes you're in a class and you go, I want to I want to take what I'm learning there and apply it over here and see how it meshes a little bit. And that's what the practicums allow you to 
do. And so we've had students who say, I think I want to be a youth pastor. And they try youth ministry for a little bit. They go, I don't really want to do that. And I'll tell you a story of one student who did a practicum and then changed her trajectory in a minute here. So that's the fourth thing. Fifthly, I think it keeps people plugged into the church. And one of the things that's helpful is when you're in your 20s, sometimes your faith journey kind of twists and turns a little bit. And you get some questions and you go, I'm not sure about some things. And by being plugged in to the BOX program here, it makes a huge difference. And so there are students who, for whom this is going to be a really great experience because there's a weekly chapel built in, there's some leadership development that's in part of the BUX program, and it allows you to build a community that's going to support you uh, during those days where you're asking some of those questions. And then for us who are pastors, who are Christian church leaders, ministry leaders, it, it is a way for people who want to stay plugged in and become pastors and missionaries and youth pastors down the road to stay, to get practical training from the beginning as they're learning their and earning their ministry degree. So those are some of the advantages uh, to the program. So some stories that I love that represent. These are students in the program. I love these students. They make, they get, I get emotional talking about them. Uh, this is Jaden. He's from Port Huron, Michigan. And he's kind of one of are the face of, of BUX for us. And he was a guy that's been out of high school for three or four years, right? And he's in an area of the country. There's no real Christian colleges. There's a couple community colleges. He's got a gift for uh, ministry and worship, but college is really expensive and far away from home. And he just thought, I'll never be able to go off to college and realize my dream to be a worship leader at a church. And along comes this program where suddenly he's being invited into a church-based development program where he can earn a degree in worship ministry leadership. And so he signed up for it, and he's been a, a rock star. He didn't take the SAT real well. I, I, he's allowed, he said I could tell a story. Uh, he took the SAT and kind of didn't do real well on it because he didn't think it mattered at all, but his GPA was like a 3.4, 3.5, so it's real strong student. And um, and he's excelled in this program. Here's one of the, while we're talking about GPAs, here's one of the thing about the BOX program. Students raise their GPA when they're in the BOX program. The reason is they come into an environment where they study together, they support each other, uh, getting good grades is part of the DNA, and so they work harder at this because they own it, it matters to them, and Jane's one of those guys. And now he's leading worship on Sunday mornings, uh, and he's finishing his second year at, at Colonial Woods Missionary Church in Port Huron, Michigan. Pretty excited for him, and he, did, he just says, I never would have thought I ever went, could go to college and do what it is I feel like God called me to do until this came along, because it, it was affordable, it was local, and it gave him an opportunity to be mentored by the church. Grace Kayser came in. She was a, she has a photography business and thought she wanted to do business, maybe ministry, wasn't really sure. And again, she was at a high school where there wasn't really a Christian college around her. It was going to be too expensive for her to come uh, to Bethel. She had checked out Bethel, but we were uh, too expensive. And so we're, she was on our do not contact list until, Be until BUNNC came along. And it's about a 25, 30 minute drive for her to go to the church every day, but she does that four days a week. And as as she's at the church, God starts talking to her, speaking to her uh, through circumstances and her gifting and says, you know, you really are interested in maybe social work or counseling, something along those lines. And so she started thinking about business, thought it would be ministry, and now she's in our behavioral and social science degree, earning a degree so she can get her MSW or MA in counseling down the road and make a difference in life. And she's supporting herself through a photography business that she does. And so she's a great story of, uh, of um, someone for whom this has been great. Like it's helped her take her next best step because otherwise she would probably not be earning the degree. All right, the guy on the left is uh, also a recent story. Uh, this is Trevor. Uh, Trevor, I know. Trevor got a full ride to a school, a state school in Michigan for swimming and he's a great swimmer. Uh, and he, about his sophomore year, started having heart issues and uh, couldn't swim and then started up his junior year and dropped out because of health issues and if uh, he wasn't swimming he wasn't interested in being at the state school so he kind of dropped out of school for a year he's got about two and a half years under his belt at this school 
during COVID started up at the IU campus there in South Bend and started taking classes and going to campus and doing online and it was in special ed education and again it wasn't it wasn't very interesting to him students professors didn't really care for him very much I mean they cared for him but it wasn't like a personal thing and eventually he ended up coming to an end after a year and so he had about three years of college under his belt and no degree and really didn't know what to do and turned around and one day I was speaking at the church doing one of these things that was Sunday morning and I just went by and I high-fived him you know and it was like a jolt I don't know what God did with him but it was like as we high-fived he's like maybe I should pay attention more to this guy and it was just like uh, you should try out be at NC so he called in his parents did and we got all his transcripts in and like we talked about point little right and uh, we looked at how many how much longer he was gonna have to go to school and uh, it was one year like we're gonna get him out the door here in May April so he started just a few weeks ago and he's gonna do we are able to, to use the multidisciplinary degree and get him out the door and I mean his parents were like weeping because they thought they have to pay for another two years of college and to get it out in to to get him out the door in one year has been amazing. Uh, about two or three weeks ago, it's probably longer than that now because of our weather, but we were bike riding for on a fundraising. They do special projects every now and then. There was a fundraising bike ride thing to honor somebody, and we were next to each other, and I said, hey, Trevor, what, how's it going? Like, how do you feel? Because he was very much in person at the two state schools, and now he's taking classes that are, even his program is like not live very often. We were talking about how some of the classes are live, so they're asynchronous, and, and, and he's in the business program, and he said, you know, I think that professors, and one of them's, I think his marketing profs, probably 75, 76 years old, and I wasn't sure how he's going to connect, because Trevor's kind of, you can tell he's kind of a unique personality. And he said, I feel like the Bethel professors care for me and know me better than any professor I ever had in this. And I thought, that was great, because these are classes that, you know, the feedback's not at the same time. They're, it's over a long period of time. And I think this is one of the things that the Bethel difference is, is that there's, there is feedback. There's support. There's nurture. There's care. There's attention given to the learning process. And Trevor is, uh, you know, uh, able to take that step forward. So I'm pretty excited about this. Well, here's what you're excited about. Okay, usually, is that the annual fee for a BUX program is $10,000 a year, and that's for a full-time student. So that means you're taking 12 to 17 hours each semester at one-fourth of the price of a regular Christian college there. And because the Pell Grant is awarded based on need, not based on cost, you can still be eligible all the way up to the full Pell Grant, which I think this year is going to be about 6700 maybe more than that dollars, uh, depending on how the government comes out there. So uh, it's amazing. We have students that are going to college in the BUX program for no cost to them, uh, especially in Indiana where there's some state grants. So any external funding you get, whether it's from the Kiwanis Club in Waimea, whether it's uh, from somebody else down the street, all the external funding comes in. Now, Bethel does not scholarship. We're already discounting the program. So when you do the FAFSA or the financial aid, you're used to seeing, hey, I wonder what such and such a school will give me. There won't be any funding coming from that. But you can see where your need is, where you can work something out. And even if we have students for whom uh, you know, they don't get much scholarship, but they work a lot. And the nice thing about this is you can maintain a nice part-time job over time on that. So any external grant is uh, uh, wonderful for that. Now, here's one of the things you get with BUX is, uh, I don't know what your experience has been with other colleges and financial aid departments, but uh, when I went to college, I didn't, they weren't like the warm, fuzzy people. You know, like you didn't go into the office and go, hey, I'm here, uh, let's talk financial aid. It's never anybody's... Uh, favorite topic, but, but our staff, uh, Brandon is amazing. He'll get on the phone, he'll hop on Zoom with you and your parents or whoever you want in the room and walk through the financial aid program, explain it. This guy's an all-star when it comes to helping you figure out the best way forward for you financially. And so he's an anchor to the program. We're super excited he's in the program and uh, have that. So here's what a semester looks like for BUX. And I'm gonna tell you about an alternative option for some of you, because we were talking about it before our program. So the program is not just taking classes, it's being a part of a community. So the BU at KMC is a sense of you're coming in to be a part of the community. You remember the first picture where everybody's coming around Taylor cheering her on. That's what it is at BUX. So there's some things that happen on a regular basis. The courses are offered, most of them, in an accelerated format for seven weeks. And to start with, they're mostly gonna be online. 
But also, all the BUX courses, when they're online, have a live component to them, meaning that you're going to be on Zoom with Professor so-and-so. He or she's going to be teaching you. They're going to know your name. You have interaction. There'll be discussion. You have small group breakouts where you and a few other students will be doing something on Zoom. Students from around the country, you get to know uh, there, and uh, it'll be amazing. So uh, like the first semester, if you've never taken a college class, your first semester will likely be, uh, class one will be uh, exploring the Christian faith. Class two would be something like uh, maybe New Testament literature or writing, written com two. We do the writing sequence in the fall, usually. Uh, and then second seven weeks, you'd have uh, perhaps New Testament lit or history or written com three. If you've already taken some of those classes and, or you've gotten dual credit, then you take another class like intro to psychology and that kind of thing. Bethel College is, Bethel University now is a liberal arts college, so there is this core that helps you become a well-rounded citizen and makes you a stronger student for down the road. I was a music major in my undergrad. I ended up getting a doctorate in education, so my liberal arts education built to my master's in education ministry onto my doctorate at Purdue. So, uh, so that's, that's what helps you, because you never know what God has for you uh, down the road. And then you can see that false, the full semester underneath there, you have that practicum where you're doing something in the community, where you're applying what you're learning, or you're trying on something, or you're involved in some way in the church. And often that first practicum is simply a leadership character development course, where you're going to read some books and do some journaling and some reflecting under the supervision of a mentor that's going to help you grow in that. Now, we do have some full semester classes, like we have an environmental science degree we're creating, where you have a full semester uh, under there. Uh, we also are creating, uh, I know you all want to take this, uh, Greek uh, for the people that want Greek for their ministry classes. So we're trying to figure out languages, and languages have to last the whole semester in there. Uh, so that's why those are there. Now, here's the thing about accelerated learning. If you've never done it before, it comes at you really fast, and, but you're only taking two classes at a time. And so that's the difference here. And the first time you ever do it, uh, it's like this cold shower. You're like, oh, it's a lot of work uh, to do it. But it's not hard. It's just work, right? It takes time. But you're not doing it for five classes like a regular college. You're doing it for two. And after about six, seven weeks of that, you get the hang of it, and then you love it more. And we've asked all the students who've done this, who have never done it before, and they wouldn't want it any other way because they love the focus. They love being able to get it done. At the end of the seven weeks, those college credits are yours for the rest of your life. You earned them. They're not going away, and so uh, that's amazing. And we've had, already had the accrediting body come in from our accrediting institution, government, and they approved the learning process, and so uh, it's fantastic. So we're going to go just a little bit more, and then I, we'll open up for some questions. So, um, so one of the things that happens is there are student activities that will be going on here on a regular basis. What they are are yet to be determined, but often that includes like a regular chapel service once a week. Uh, maybe you get involved into, uh, pulled into a staff meeting to participate once a month or so. You'll get to do some sharing. So one of the cool things is one of our churches, a very large church, about three thousand. Uh, they will sort of randomly select a, a student to uh, actually lead in the entire church staff, 65 staff people at the church. And uh, the students come in and you get to be part of this large leadership level, which is amazing. Uh, there's some mentoring that goes on. There's also some fun activities. Uh, we have student, we have a site that goes and where they work, they work out together at uh, Planet Fitness Place down the road. They do that. Um, we have another site that uh, regularly uh, goes to the coffee shop together and gets the opposite. They drink like really sugary drinks uh, all the time. So somewhere in between, you can do stuff, right? There's usually a service activity on a regular basis and, and all this stuff. So um, did I? I no, we're uh, good? We're good? Yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, you may be correcting a typo there or something like that. So, uh, but um, all of our BUX classes have a live component. We want to have that live interaction. And um, we have also the opportunity for you, not that we want to talk about this up front, but we do have 25 sites across the country. And so we have some sites who are starting to talk about like exchange programs where you can go and do your BUX classes at another site, maybe on the mainland or somewhere like that. Uh, of course, everybody right now in the snow,
America was to come here, right? So uh, there's those types of things that are having conversations as the site directors talk to each other. They're saying, hey, so-and-so would like to do this. We have a, uh, one of my students who's at the Indiana site. She's doing her BUX down in a church in Alabama and getting experience at Alabama in a cross-cultural setting, a multicultural setting, and she's uh, learning there. So that's the amazing thing about this is you step into this, this world where there's, it's again, you own this this learning process and you say, hey, I would love to go to Orlando and maybe learn at Harvest Church or we have churches in Texas uh, as well. So you can come to South Bend and have a lot of snow too if you want there. Um, yeah, so it's an amazing opportunity. Practicums can happen uh, all over the island as they want to. So here's what a sample, oh, here's what degrees are being offered here. And, and John, are we offering all these? Are we going to start there? Okay, so every site gets to determine what they want to offer. And here we're going to just kind of throw them out there and see what sticks, you know, so these are the ones. So we have two-year degrees. So the first one is a general studies degree. It's kind of like, hey, get your gen eds out of the way. Come give us two years, figure things out, take those, go off to wherever you want to go. Transfer to, uh, you know, any of the California state schools or a Christian school in the mainland or, or uh, U of H or whatever you want to do there. Ministry leadership then has the general core, but then also ministry courses where it gets you started on there. The pre-education, gets you in four or five education courses to build the foundation and you finish your last two years at a state school or a school in the state where you want to get certified. We can't offer a full education degree four years online yet. We're still working on that, but it's coming. In our four-year degrees, our ministry leadership, worship leadership, and we have the two degrees in business, marketing, or administration. The behavior and social science, again, that's for psych and so. So if you want to do an MA in counseling or an MSW, this there, uh, cybersecurity and multidisciplinary studies. Now, the business degrees in behavioral social science and cybersecurity, those classes, the major classes, are not offered yet with a live component. So the work each seven weeks is done uh, at your own pace, right? So as pre-recorded lectures, and t but you will be in discussion boards. You will have some postings there. You'll get feedback from the professor uh, in a timely fashion. And just so you know, those are a larger programs than just BUX there. The multidisciplinary studies I need to build, point attention to is for those students who have already done college or have a college degree or have three years and they want to just finish. <laughs> I want to get this thing done. And that's the degree I use with them with the ability to be able to say, okay, let's get you a, a four-year degree as fast as we can. Or it's for students who want to combine three or four areas and kind of make their own degree. Like they want to do something that uh, we don't offer a full degree and we can, that's how we be, can be creative. Now, I don't know if you're going to see this as a positive or not here at uh, Kalaheo, but uh, I'll be the academic advisor for any student in the first year or two that comes through this program. So we'll work, I'll work with you and your family to figure out what the next best step is for you, and we'll be creative in that and help you there. Now, we do have some students that come along and say, hey, I want to do this, but I work full-time during the day. What, what are my options in this? And the really cool thing is that Bethel has an adult and graduate studies program that offers uh, some of these, most of these degrees in a format where you can work at your own pace in the evenings, and it's not part of the BUX program. The pricing structure is different, and you don't have the full orb feel here at KMC, but there are opportunities for you uh, to get a degree, a finish a degree if you're an adult, this is career, farther along in life, maybe you don't want to do this. this. That's another option you have. And we do have master's degrees online as well, too. So all that is, it can be found at online.bethelluniversity.edu, online.bethelluniversity.edu. And those will have all our adult degrees and all our graduate degrees there. And I used to run that program, too. So here's what a typical week may look like, and then we'll take some questions here, uh, there. Uh, so often the classes here in Hawaii, the live part, will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday mornings because of the time difference. And Christy and I will uh, they create the schedule or sensitive to, we'll have an East Coast time and a West Coast time because we have West Coast schools. And so you'll combine with the West Coast usually for some of your classes there. Now, not every day, every semester will that happen. So for instance, this semester, most of our classes that are live are on Tuesdays and Mondays. Next semester, 
it's going to Tuesday, Wednesday, and we put a lit class on Thursdays in the morning. And some of our older students are taking the lit class because it's a 300 level course, but not all of them are. So you won't be doing all of those, but generally for a semester, two of those days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll have the classes, uh, the live component. And then the rest of it you will do, uh, you have time for your practicum, you have time for your uh, study time. So we do say, hey, we're gonna study. <laughs> for a while, it's a novel thing. When I went to college, I didn't realize that if you studied, you got better grades. Uh, it wasn't until grad school I realized that happened. Well, that's what's happening here. There's the culture of, you know, you'll take a class together, and we try to put students at each church in a class or two each semester together so that they can study together, help each other with assignments, and that's really positive experience there. And then there's the practicum. So if you're in ministry, like a Wednesday night, if you have programming here at the church, you'd be a part of that. You may have a Thursday night programming here, Sunday morning practicum if you want. Once a month, we try to do a community outreach there. But every week we try to have some sort of character building, mentoring, nurturing experience, plus a chapel and other things. But it's super flexible. And if you have a snow day where you can't make, oh wait, there we go. But if there's a reason you can't make it to the church or something, you can do the work from home. Like if you're ill or something, that's what makes it super flexible in here. Now, as a site grows, as we grow this site, Kauai, eventually we'll have live teaching on site when you get to a certain number of students down the road. And we'll try to make that happen. The really cool thing is that we're also working on how can we bring sites together uh, for like regional gatherings or national gatherings. So last year, all the sites came to one site and they had Old Testament class. Everybody's taking Old Testament. And the professor flew up from Texas and he taught on site at an Indiana church. There's a family in a church that owned a bed and breakfast. And so all the sites were together. All the students got to meet each other in person because they'd been meeting on Zoom. And uh, so we're doing that. We have students coming to campus from San Antonio to visit people uh, this January. And we're looking at ways, can we, how can we gather people together? With three islands now having sites potentially down the road, there could be an opportunity for that type of gathering down the road. Um, also, uh, we're doing a Holy Land trip this summer for all BUX sites as well. So you get to go on uh, regular events and trips where it's just for the students. Because what's happening, I don't know if you've ever experienced this already, if you've only met someone on Zoom for a while, and then you get together, it feels like you actually did kind of know them. Uh, uh, at least I've had that experience. And so we found out with the students that meeting people in person has been uh, been great. And I did this, I went down to uh, a site in Orlando and there was a student there and they came out and I said, hey, good to see you again. And then we realized I'd never met her. I'd only seen her on Zoom. But we felt like we knew each other because of that. So this is a sample weekly schedule. It's not created here, but that's how it might work. Now, here's the thing about this program. So I just did a research project over the last three or four weeks, separate from Bethel and this. And I interviewed the leading Christian school leaders in America, K through 12, and I asked them some questions, what's the future of education? And they all said to me, not knowing what I did at Bethel, they said, education is gonna have to change because the young people coming up today are, are just living accelerated lives, they're farther along, they have dreams, at the same time, they don't really know what the dreams are. You know, they, they wanna do this, but they have this, this lifestyle, and education's gotta flex with students who want flexibility. And I feel, and I was sitting there going, yeah, that's what we're doing with this extension site. So it can feel new, unsure, a little weird, and it's the first time we've talked about it tonight, isn't it? But the reality is that this is where things are heading, that an education that has a hybrid reality where it's got the in time, in person, but also work at your own pace, where it flexes with you as you wanna travel and do things, where you wanna move about the country even and do things, I think is super amazing. And so we're excited for that. We're excited for the Extension Studies program. And uh, for those of you watching our video, the one thing I would ask is help us get the word out. You know, the big thing is, uh, this is going to happen. It's going to be great. You guys are going to pioneer this thing. Like we had just about a dozen students pioneer it last year, and now it's grown. And it's been amazing to watch. And those sites where they have freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors at it, it's amazing to watch that. They have upperclassmen leading the way like you would at a college in that. So if you could spread the word, as you hear people talk about their niece, their nephew, their grandpa, not their grandpa, but their grandkids, or maybe grandpa went to school too. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, as you hear people talk about, they don't, they, they have a friend who's at a college and they're not liking it, just say, hey, I know of a place that you may want to finish your degree at, be you at KMC, 
Cali, over at Calio Missionary Church. Just be, you know, especially help us on the island to, to spread the word and share this video and share the brochures in them. So I'll answer any questions you have, and we have lovely people with microphones so that people can hear it at home, and uh, we'll do that. So any questions? Addison, what was your favorite question you had for me? Ooh, I yeah, yeah, you can start. Uh, okay. Um, Okay. Whose birthday is closest to today? Like, whose birthday? Anybody have a birthday this month? April? What is it? 20, anybody closer? 27th of December? Okay. You want to? So we have uh, we have uh, squirrels on our campus, and uh, we've created the squishy squirrel as our BUX. Uh, not a very threatening uh, BUX mascot, but uh, there you go, squishy squirrels. There you, you can have that there. And we uh, are from Indiana, so we have squishy basketballs there, and somewhere you can have a basketball there. Uh, we have national champions in basketball. The squirrel thing's amazing, yeah, because it's a, hot, a huge population, but uh, we also have a huge population of red-tailed hawks on campus. And they eat squirrels. So occasionally you'll be in a class, there'll be this serious moment the professor's having, and right outside the window there'll be a squirrel being devoured, and it's like, right off. Addison, what do you got? Just pick one. You can't pick, you can't pick a wrong one. You're going to lead off the question and answer. Here we go. Okay, cool. Uh, I guess the one I was, I'm going to choose is, uh, the one I asked is, uh, do you accept people with little to no knowledge on uh, the subject in... Yeah, well, so you're asking specifically about the cybersecurity degree, which yeah. we think is going to be very popular here in Hawaii because uh, it provides an opportunity for you to earn money uh, mm -hmm. even if there's a COVID shutdown, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, that one you can start from ground zero. You need to probably have some affinity for tech. Like, I don't think my better half, my wife, would take it because tech always frustrates her. But if you like tech, that'd be good. Uh, if you want to do the music degree, you probably need to know music, you know, a little bit, but we don't have a music degree, so... Uh, uh, I guess this was a secondary question I came up with later, but uh, I'm just wondering if you know, but uh, in this cybersecurity uh, classes, exactly what uh, type of coding language would we be learning? Would it be something like Python, JavaScript? Do you know that one? All, both of those. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah, so I do know that part, so there you go. All right, other questions? I have a question. Um, you talked about the different degree programs and yet how they'd be meeting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <coughs> what could you walk us through, like what that looks like since they're in different programs? Are they each person like right. have their own computer? Is there someone that's, oh, that's facilitating? What does that look like? Yeah, we need every student to have their own laptop computer. We have a tech requirements court, uh, PDF we provide people with. And um, we will probably eventually have an owl here where it is a, a Zoom device that <coughs> allows, it tracks who's talking. But it's helpful for every student to have their own video to be able to interact on Zoom personally, for sure. So let's say there's a live course and it's me teaching the Exploring the Christian Faith. There may be a big screen up here uh, where uh, there would be uh, uh, my face teaching in PowerPoint and so forth and so on. And then each person would be interacting uh, maybe with a camera here. So we could do it in a group, but also there's some, tr uh, so it's kind of a both question, I think. It's a long answer for that. Yeah, so we do some in group and we do some with laptops, but every student will have to have a laptop. Okay. So those yeah. classes would be in every degree, the ones Yeah, every uh, every degree, yeah, general studies degree. We're gonna try to be as interactive as possible. And now that BUX has grown across the country, we can do that more and more, for sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here comes the microphone. So when someone gets to their major level classes, yeah. they're mostly at home. Is that kind of? No, it'd be here too. It uh, depends on the major too. So we're hoping. The microphone's going. Yeah, we're hoping to get to the point where, um, like, let's say you're taking uh, principles of marketing, which is an asynchronous course right now, which is not taught live, but it could be down the road. Uh, there, students still like to get together and work on it uh, together there, so you would like work on the, the re you might watch the video together, it's pre-recorded for Professor Drake who's teaching right now or something, and then you would do like your assignments together. As together as we can get it, that'd be great. But the opposite is true too, where you're going, hey, I've got, I'm doing this, can I just do it at home? 
they may want to work at home there, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we have some sites where the professors are teaching live. Like let's say there's a professor here teaching, um, you know, writing, and he or she would be here at Zoom. We, could, we have a setup where they teach uh, you all live, and then we Zoom other students in, and then there's a Zoom of the PowerPoint. So this is the advantage of what's happened with COVID a little bit, is that we're getting a little more used to that. Technology has really accelerated in this. And so right now, our biblical interpretation class is taught live at one church where there's about eight or nine students. Three students are Zooming in from other sites, but it's all live at this moment. And with an owl, with all the technology, it just feels really natural now. And it looks good on video. It is, it's just, it's amazing. So, yeah, I don't know if I answered that well, but I mean, it's a little, it kind of, again, yeah. both, yeah. Um, if a student was interested in a major that wasn't offered here but was offered at Bethel, is there a possibility for that without having to go to Indiana? Oh, you, want, you don't want to come to Indiana? <laughs> I'll be there in a heartbeat, but <laughs> just in case there's that yeah. situation. Yeah, so um, the answer right now is, uh, like, what would degree would it be? Like an, an engineering degree or something. Yeah, no, that'd be hard for us to do. We can't offer engineering from a distance yet. And I think right now, I, I mean, the most honest answer is I don't see us developing new majors online right now. So um, what's happening in a context is that our adult online program has stagnated a little bit. So there's a, like a lockdown on the growth. So like uh, I wrote the cybersecurity degree with the math professor. We wrote it together. And that was kind of the last degree we developed there. We do have a great engineering program, so all the faculty back at Bethel would say, hey, get your gen eds out of the way and then come to campus and do the, the two plus two, where you do a, a couple years at Bethel and you finish at Notre Dame with an engineering degree, so. Is, is that realistic, uh, that you could do every two years here and two years there, or would an engineering degree require you to be there? For I would be years? happy to chat with each, you know, if, if that's the way you want to do, where you want to do like your gen eds here and finish at Bethel, that's a real possibility for engineering. It may be a little, may require a little extra there because engineering is an extra right. uh, year probably. Okay. So it'd probably be a two, one, two thing. But yeah, we could work on it. I mean, that's the, that's the cool thing is every student steps in the door and says, hey, here's what I want to do. Can we make it work? And I told you about Trevor's story. We made it work. So um, there. So, but engineering, uh, nursing, education, Music, obviously, a little tricky right now. Because yeah. the, the reason they're tricky is they have the extra accreditation requirement. I had a question. Yeah. Um, I think you mentioned that there's three sites in Hawaii. Where's the other two? So uh, we have one on the Big Island. It's uh, on the whole, it's still slow and developing there, but we, it's official there. And we have one emerging on Oahu that I is not official yet, but I anticipate it coming. So part of my reason for being on this trip. So there, yeah, so we're uh, thrilled for all of those. And they're with partnering churches, people who have affinity with us, we know them well, uh, we're excited for that. Another one. Uh, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, no. um, if you don't have an example, it's okay. I was just wondering if you might be able to think of an example when you were talking about practicums, because um, it sounds, Sounds really great. Where I went to school, we didn't have anything like that. It was yeah. just all courses. So do you have an example, uh, anything you yeah, can think sure. of? So one of the cool things about the practicums is that let's say you're uh, on the island here, and you don't go to this church, and you want to be plugged in back at your church, you could do the practicum back here. So we're not interested in pulling students away and doing work here at, at KMC only. So in one city, we have students coming to a uh, BUX site, and the, but the guy is interested in sound technology at his church. So he runs sound and tech at his church, which is a huge need in larger churches in the, in the 48. So, uh, so he's doing his practicum under the supervision of a tech person who's then intentionally having to read books and do things. So when you do a practicum, it's not just that you do something and you get credit for it. You actually are going to read and reflect on the lived experience while you're doing it. And the reading is going to pertain to what it is you're doing. So we have two, we have another two students who are interested in pastoral counseling. One of our churches has a great pastoral counseling staff. And the guy created four years worth of practicums to lead them through. How do you go into, like for instance, how would you go into a hospital room and comfort someone who's been given terminal news that they're not going to make it? You know, well, if 
feels odd to say that when you're 19 or 20, but I often tell our graduates, I'm the youth ministry major, I'm the youth ministry major. I say, you'll do a funeral in the next year or two before you do a wedding, usually. And they'll often call me sometime or text me and say, I was I, when you said that, I never believed you until I had to do it, be a part of a funeral. So learning how to do pastoral counseling, how do you sit there and problem counsel when someone's got a problem? How do you do responding skills? Those little techniques you know, in a counseling setting, that's good. I mentioned Colin, he's doing his digital marketing experience. He wanted, thought he was going to do graphic design, and he called me and said, can I do a digital marketing, and where should I do it? And I hooked him up with a, a digital marketing firm, and he earned the, the internship, and now he's doing it, and I think that's the field he wants to go into. So those are examples. We have three business people in one community, an insurance agent, an optometrist, and an Edward Jones agent, and they're taking in students for a semester each, and just teaching them how to be a Christian in the business world. Not every student's doing it, but it's an option. And so each student can say, yeah, I want to work with so-and-so or the other person or the other. And they go in for a day, and that person's opened up his or her office for the day, and they get to shadow them and walk through, you know, appropriately so what it's like to be a Christian as an insurance agent, as an optometrist or Edward Jones. So those are the level of, that's, I mean, that's amazing. And again, all those have reading, reflection, grading on that, so... I have a follow-up question to that because that was great. Um, are these practicums like listed or are these based off of just people's interest that they come to and yeah. then they're fo found? So we have templates to the practicums and then each site director works with the student. We have an adjunct professor. So they're, they're not listed by like, you know, Kauai Sea Tours Captain Practicum, you know. You, with Captain Jeff out there or whatever, uh, there. But it'd be like, a, they're called extension studies practicums and the, the focus of them can change site to site uh, there. But what happens is a site will develop a catalog of eight or nine of them and that site will say, hey, here's what we've got. You can work with so-and-so at State Farm, so-and-so at Edward Jones, so-and-so at Optarmage. You can work with Pastor Jason, and, you know, here and there. So each site has its own established curriculum. And I, I Christy and I, and Pastor Ian approve all those practicums. So there's, it's not, I mean, we have to because of accreditation. That's where we're gonna get looked at first, right? Are you just giving credit away, you know? So th we, they're pretty robust. Is this school regionally, nationally accredited? What is the accreditation process? Yeah, so that's the advantage of a Bethel degree is all the credits will transfer to any school uh, accredited in the, in the country. I noticed on one of the slides that it was from 18 to 25. Is that like a general market or is it just That's solid? That's the intended market okay. is recent high school graduates. We have, uh, we have a couple of students in their 40s who are in the program. The problem when you get above 25 is that if you have a full-time job, it's very difficult to do the BUX model. And those are the students that take our AGS courses, the, 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 you know, the asynchronous online courses there. But if a student, we have a 27-year-old who stepped in and said they want to be a part of the BOX program. Here's the amazing thing is most of our students have been out of high school a year or two before they jump into this or more uh, there. It's, um, so this answers the question. We have a student, I have a student who transferred from one of the, uh, besides Point Loma, one of the better Christian colleges in America transferred to a BUX site. And, uh, and, and his complaint was, I, I felt like my advisor, even at a Christian school, didn't really know me very well. Like it is that impersonal, is a larger Christian college uh, there, and and he's just flourishing under this. In, you know, he, we're focused on him and developing himself. Yeah. Again, uh, it's an amazing situation online. Uh, B, uh, so the program is buxbethelluniversity.edu. Uh, we do have a specific website for the Hawaii programs, and we're still working on uh, the Kauai version of that coming uh, shortly in a website near you there. So there'll be plenty of opportunities. This video will be helpful, even though I talked uh, a long time. And uh, um, what else? We have lots of materials here, uh, squishy squirrels and all that. So uh, if, yeah, if you're interested in watching the video, stop by uh, the church here and get some materials too, or uh, text or email, so we'll do that. Yeah, go. More questions? I think one more. Um, 
when when do the classes start here? What, what kind of deadlines are you looking at for yeah, registration and application and stuff? Yeah. yeah, so it'd be better if you jump in the funnel uh, as soon as possible. Uh, January would be a great time to put in your application or at least start making it known even sooner than that so that Becky can start working with uh, all this, get your materials in. Because then you get an answer of what it's gonna be like for you. Brandon can talk to you about that. The FAFSAs uh, do in March-ish sometime. So you wanna make sure the FAFSA gets in. I know it's a pain to do, and parents don't like doing it either. Uh, I remember when my kids were out of diapers, then out of the car seat, then they could dress themselves, then they could drive, and I didn't have to do FAFSA anymore. Those were big days in my life as a parent uh, there. So I get that, but it's helpful and important because you actually earn money back for that if there's need, so make sure you do that. Uh, and then uh, our first registration is in April for fall, and then June, and then early August. So those are our three big online registration days for BUX, and we've got about a, you know, there's about a, there's quite a bit of students jumping in the funnel. So the earlier you get in, the better service you get, obviously, uh, for that. Um, classes run, uh, this is the cool thing, August to early December. So we're actually done here with our fall semester in a day or two, and then they get six weeks off, which is amazing for Christmas break. So, and then we start in January and go to the end of April, and that means you get May, June, July off, too. So four months in the summer. So there's a lot, so it's two 14 week sessions. You usually have a beginning of the year retreat right before school starts here, which just for the BU at KMC students. Uh, we usually have, you know, like an overnighter somewhere or something, but uh, yeah, it's amazing. We do have winter terms then and May terms and summer terms. So if you want to accelerate at extra cost, uh, but it's still pretty affordable, you can crank through and get college done. If you're starting from zero, you can do college in three years, easy, two and a half, maybe even really fast. So. Don't recommend it. You kind of miss out on life, but uh, but you can do it. But like, if a student needs something, those those are the ways to stay on track too. So, any other questions at all? So the really cool thing again is I just say help us get the word out, tell your friends and stuff. Uh, and we have six students jumping in in January here at the site where you just saw the picture of Taylor graduating, and all six of them. I talked to last summer about whether they wanted to be involved or not, and they go, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I want to do it. They should, and then about like two months ago, they said, I should have done that, right? <laughs> I missed out. I don't know what I was thinking. It's just I'm not sure about going to college or the church and all that, and and they they just saw how their friends were accelerating and and, and loving it. So. If you're on the fence, uh, do that. So you can uh, email me. Uh, once you get in the funnel and then Becky gets your stuff, then you and I will have a conversation at that point and we'll walk through your materials and help you with that. So, cool? So, all right, let me pray for you and then we'll, we'll hang out and talk some more. Lord, thanks for this group that's come out tonight and uh, shown interest in this. Lord, you're involved in that. You're moving our hearts and minds and you're prompting us for a dream. Uh, something in the future that we want to achieve, be a part of, realize. And so we trust you for that. And I pray for all these students. Pray for those who are watching online right now and uh, sharing the video and watching it another time that you'd uh, uh, continue to lead them and uh, prompt them and as they hear of other students and people who may benefit from something like this that they'd share it. Lord, we just pray for what you're doing. We're grateful how you continue to lead us through this journey and this process of of uh, surviving what we've been through and uh, sometimes we feel weary and we feel tired and yet at the same time uh, we look ahead we look ahead with hope and anticipation and so we pray that you would lead us forward and bless everyone that came tonight thanks for this church and your ministry for the leadership here and the staff who've given their time for the sake of others for your blessing on them as well in Jesus name Amen